This week's episode is brought to you by the Communicore Weekly Online Store. Uh, the greatest online store? I would assume so. Visit CommunicoreWeekly.com and click on the store link to see our t-shirt designs and all of our fantastic music and help feed all those poor Communicore babies out there. Well, hello and welcome to Communicore Weekly, the greatest online show. I'm George. And I'm Jeff. And guess what? I, I'm in California. Yeah, I thought there'd be more of a delay. There's like a three-hour delay. It's weird. Well, I mean, there is. They're just not hearing it because I'm editing it out. Oh, good, good. So I have to suffer with the recording session that's going to take us about 12 hours. Yes, long. which is just about as long as it usually does anyway, so... Exactly, exactly. But, so, wow, so now I'm on Walt Disney World time and you're on Disneyland time. Is that weird? Do you think that's going to be weird? I think we've got both sides covered. I mean, yeah, we can we can cover all angles of the continental Disney parks now. Except, I mean, I'm really getting everything about three and a half hours, you know, four hours before you do. That, which is, that's, yeah. That's weird. Time. This, this, is, oh. this has become a time travel podcast, finally. That means I get to see Community before you do. Oh, that's only if they renew it. They did. They did. Oh, they did? They did. See, you yes, probably did. got that news three hours ago, and I didn't hear it oh, yet. Oh, you haven't seen it yet. Ah, oh, man. This, Gosh, is, this, this is crazy. This is timey-wimey, crazy-wazy. Yes, we'll go with that. Well, um, I'd like to hear a little bit about your trip. Well, perhaps I should take you on a, a trip report, then. I'm step, jump, and I'm scared. We took a trip, and this is our trip. So while I was driving out to California, took a little uh, side trip to Marceline, Missouri. I don't know if you heard of that before, George. I mean, occasionally it's been brought up. Just one, once or twice. Once or twice. Once not or twice. often. Not often. So <laughs> no, pe- people are like, "Oh, you went to Walt's birthplace." I'm like, he, "He's he's not born there." I'm sorry to pull the Disney nerd card out, but he yeah, was, he 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 lived there for a good couple of years, and you know, it helped shape his mind for things later on in life such as uh, Main Street USA it, mm-hmm. it's it's very bizarre because we're driving and then you know we're seeing signs for Marceline and then we're seeing signs for turn here for the original Main Street USA <laughs> and you know when when we turned onto it you could you could see it I mean it, it's more um, Walt Disney World size obviously because it's an actual road and cars have to <laughs> drive it um, <laughs> But it was really cool. Like you're looking at some of the buildings, and you're like, "Oh, look, that's uh, that's Coke Corner, and that is like the Hotel Marceline." So it was really mm-hmm. cool to see the uh, the inspiration behind the the buildings that eventually made it into Disneyland at Walt Disney World. Yeah, well, that's always been the story is that it's it's uh, Harper Goff's Fort Collins, Colorado, that was more of the inspiration. But you feel pretty comfortable that it was easy to spot. I can definitely see how there, you know, it could be a, a mashup of the two. But okay. there were a bunch of buildings um, that were pretty much. I mean, I, I don't want to say identical, but you can definitely see where the uh, uh, inspiration for the ones on Main Street in Disney parks came from compared to here. It, it was incredible to see them. I, I was super psyched about that. Um, we drove up and down the street a couple of times. I took pictures of the the actual road sign because there were Mickey Mouse ears on it, which I thought were <laughs> adorable. Um, and was was there a, a, a chapeau, a place you could get ears? Monogram uh, there? there, there was not. Unfortunately, uh. there was not. There was a cool diner. I, 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 sorry, I totally forgot the name of, of it. But Martina and I ate there, and it was quite delicious. I will say, um, it, but it was right on the corner of the beginning of Main Street. So if you're there. Go. I think it starts with the letter M. I'm sorry that I'm totally blanking right now. I feel terrible. <laughs> it's okay. We can figure it out later. So. Yeah, that's fine. But um, there was a lot more than just the Main Street USA there, right? Yes. So, you know, we went to the Walt Disney Hometown Museum, um, which is in the train depot that, that it used to be a train depot, but they, they bought it and they restored it and they turned it into a whole museum about Walt's years 
when he was living in Marceline. And I want to say it's, it's not all about Walt. It's about Walt and his family overall. And it was really interesting because they had a lot of stuff from the time that they lived there. You know, they had a lot of news articles from the 1930s. Um, they had a lot of photographs of, of Walt when he was there. And it, it was really cool just to see how he lived his early years there. Um, when one of his sisters died, she was a pack rat apparently. And her son called Kay, who is the, uh, the, the director of the museum, and said, you know, I have a bunch of stuff. If you want to look through it, you're welcome to it. And she flew out to the house to look at it, and she thought it was just going to be like a box full of stuff. And she said she came back with all these old family like letters and photographs and everything, and they made this huge display with it. I mean, it was, it was really interesting to learn not just about early Walt, but about the rest of his family as well, which, aside from Roy, like, we really don't learn too much about his other brothers and sisters. Um, but it was really cool to see all that stuff uh, on, on display there. And uh, aside from that, you know, there was these incredible models on the second floor of Disneyland that this guy made out of cardboard and toothpicks and it was just incredibly incredibly detailed um right down to you know there there's one of the enchanted tiki room and all the tiki gods in the tiki garden were there just very very small and i i couldn't believe how detailed it was it, it reminded me um martina and i both said when we got in there it reminded us a lot of our our friend colby listener of the show because <laughs> that's what he's eventually going to graduate into making these full you know models uh like he much like he does now but this is the probably the, the next step for him did you get uh how much time did you guys spend at the museum um we were on a tight schedule so we were only in the actual museum itself for about two hours or so and then in Marceline overall for about another hour after that because you know we got back in the car and i drove for like another eight hours you know well into the evening at that point because we wanted to get to california but there was <laughs> so so much in the museum and it's definitely um it's a full day museum guys I, i'll come right out and say it <laughs> definitely a full day museum <laughs> i was wondering if it was going to get that was one of my questions is is it is it a destination museum should it, people that are close by make that extra trip uh, i time? i definitely think so because you know I, there's a lot of other cool stuff in there. There's the Midget Autopia car as well, which I thought was kind of cool. And she said they're trying to spruce up the the cars and the track again and, and move it closer mm -hmm. to the museum because it's no longer in operation, but they want to get it back up and running again. Sure. Um, but again, aside from Main Street and the museum, there's also Walt's Dreaming Tree in the barn, which is very close by also. Um, and the Dreaming Tree is where he used to sit when he was a kid underneath, and he would draw and he would dream. Unfortunately, it was struck by lightning a couple of years ago, so it's it's in very sad state, state right now, but they planted a sapling very close to it to kind of grow into a new Dreaming Tree. Oh, okay. Um, so that was really cool to see. And then for a little further down the path from there is the barn, um, which is the same. It's a replica of the barn that they had on their farm there. And... You know, Disney fans from all over sign the inside of the barn. So it was really cool to go in and see these signatures from all these Disney fans from all over time. Of course, I left one for Communicable Weekly because <laughs> why not? Um, we also found signatures from some of her friends, like Adam Lewu and Keith yeah. Gluck. Um, what? That, that hack? What? I know, right? Say it's, what? It's funny because Martina wasn't looking for it and she just happened to stumble across it and it was on one of the high up beams and I was like, well, this is too good to pass up. So we we moved a milk can that was in there so I can get up next to it. <laughs> and, you know, Keith wrote something to the effect of, you know, Dear Walt, thanks for everything. If it wasn't for you, you know, I wouldn't be doing this. Keith Gluck. Yeah. And then the date. It was from, like, 2007. And then I wrote next to it, Dear Walt, I agree with everything Keith said, even if he is less handsome than me. <laughs> Which is a scientific, it's a proven fact. Uh, guys, it's on the internet. It must be real. So uh, uh, Yeah. Wow. So you got to leave... Uh, so it, was it worth heading out to see the barn and the dreaming tree? For for me, the entire Marceline side trip was totally worth the, the drive. Um, gotcha. A, any Disney fan that happens to drive through Missouri or even if they're elsewhere, you know, within a day's drive of going to it, I think it's definitely worth the trip going to see. It is a great little piece of history. Um, it, it's, it's, it's great. It may be in the middle of nowhere, but it's totally worth the trip. <laughs> It sounds like, you know, if you can swing a Kansas City trip and then drive the 
hours to get to Marceline, that could be a good combo. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, at that point we were driving so much that it really wasn't that far of a drive from our destination that morning, so it worked mm-hmm. out really well, but I definitely think everyone, our, our real Disney fans and, and Disney historians and scholars should definitely go check it out. Well, that's good, because I know you guys were short on time because you had to make it to the world's largest ball of twine. Hey, we made it there that night. It was six hours afterward, and it it was, I don't know, 10 o'clock at night, and nobody was around. The neighborhood was a little sketchy, and (laughs) Martina turned on her brights was like, get out and take pictures because we ain't coming back. (laughs) Well, that's good. So it sounds like a great side trip yes. for all the communal corps cadets out there i think a communal corps weekly field trip may be in order at some point in the future Ooh, i think i think you would enjoy it too that's a good idea and you know we, we got to go back when the midget autopia cars are working again so that's, let's go try to cover it exactly exactly so Kay, when you when you hear this invite us to the opening and we'll totally come out to it he's a nerd he's a geek but we all like to hear him speak so listen up to the words from his beat. Ah! It's George's Book of the Week. This week's book is Midlife Mouse by Wayne Franklin. And this book is a little bit different from what we normally review here uh, for two reasons. One of them is it's fiction. It's a novel, which is kind of strange. Um, I won't get into the details yet, we'll that in a minute, but I've yet to run across any really good fiction written about Walt Disney World. Just saying, just saying. And the other one that's kind of weird is Jeff and I both got copies of this in early April or March or something like Yeah, early March. I think it was March, yeah. It was March, and there was a media blackout on the book, so we couldn't tell anybody we had them. We were embargoed. It was a, it was a media embargo, which is kind of odd. We get that a lot from Disney. They'll release video games or other things, and they're like, you can't talk about it, but you can enjoy it for a little while. It's kind of like Fight Club. What? Which I can't talk about. What are you talking about? Exactly. Ixnay on the ite. Fay of play. Um, brush up your face. Anyway, and get yeah, back I'm to gonna it. have to. Yeah, I've got the. I've got the. I'm taking the home study course on Pig Latin. So, anyways, <laughs> Rosetta Stone Pig Latin. <laughs> Rosetta Stone for Pig Latin. <laughs> okay, so this is Midlife Mouse, Wayne Franklin, a novel, and what can I say? Uh, Wayne Franklin is a really good author, really good writer fantastic command of the English language and the guy knows his Disney history he, there was never once uh, never once reading this book that I question anything the author put down as far as a fact or anything else um, you know beyond that it was still kind of odd that's all we'll say it, all kind of odd <laughs> yeah I, I, it, it, it's a difficult book to review I think mostly because we are um, die hard Disney nerds, and yeah. I'm you know we're not saying the book is bad because it's not. It's it's got a lot of really good qualities, but I think the the structure of of the book, the the fantasy elements that he incorporates into it, it kind of threw us for a loop. It it wasn't what I was expecting, um, and it and it wasn't the is not the type of fiction I usually read. So mm-hmm. I, again, I, I am not sure if I if me personally is the target audience for this I can think of many many other people who would enjoy this book such as uh, fans yeah. of the Kingdom Keeper series yeah I was thinking there, there were a lot of in my issue with it is uh, it, it's that whole there's a Disney prophecy that's involved and it sort of treats Walt Disney as a very godlike figure and then there's a new son that's coming you know, I didn't ruin anything in the book so you've got this odd <laughs> prophetical back background which which uh, it, something is so concrete and so real I find it hard to wrap my brain around you know putting something like that on top of it but it's like you said Jeff it, it's it's great book it's a lot of fun I enjoyed it there's a lot of uh, cliffhanger type uh, endings to chapters and things like that so you wanted to read more and you want to continue reading the story. I didn't like the flashbacks and some of the flash forwards. I, I was I a little a flashback. Uh, yeah, I was a little confused uh, some of the time because it doesn't outright state you know it's a flashback yeah. or it's back in present day. So the jump in the narrative confused me a little bit uh, yeah, when it when it did that point. sometimes, and it took me until a couple pages into it for me to realize, oh wait, this is either taking before or after what I just read. So yeah, it was an interesting mix. Yeah, um, he, he did a great job with the characters. Uh, yeah, um, I think Wayne did an excellent job creating these characters and this mythology um, mm-hmm. that 
he that he created. I, I think he did an excellent job of that. Yeah, it's just when you get into, well, for starters, the the main character says, "I'm I'm not much of a Disney fan. I don't know a lot about it." And then he's spouting astute Disney trivia and facts the rest of the book. You know, it's 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 impressive, <laughs> nonetheless. But it's I think people will enjoy this. Uh, it's not like the Kingdom Keepers book where a lot of people got upset because the geography was wrong. Um, it, it, it's sort of, you know, hands down, the best fiction book I've ever read is um, Our Kingdom of Dust by Leonard Kinsey. You know, great novel set at the Magic Kingdom, not a lot of fantasy involved with it, whereas this has a lot of fantasy into it. A lot of things you have to take uh, a little bit of grain of salt with. But I still, I still really enjoy the book, Midlife Mouse. I still highly recommend it. I would have just, I don't know. I think I would like to have seen the approach a little bit different, maybe. I, we, we know he's writing more, and I'm really curious to okay. see where he takes the story from here. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm definitely going to be on the lookout for the next uh, book in the series, whenever that is, a, a year from, or two from, from now. Just, just to see where the story goes next, because I honestly have no idea where it's going to go next. You know, he ended it on a pretty good note so i'm curious mm -hmm. to see what happens next exactly and uh, we can't theorize much about that without giving away a lot of the story but you know if if you're looking for something you know good to read this summer uh, it's a good beach read um you know and a nice couple of weekends to check it out and you might enjoy it and it's uh midlife mouse by wayne franklin and jeff got anything to add before we close it out or uh, no, check it out. I, no. I think it's, it'll be a good uh, light summer read for some of you guys. Yum, 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 yum. If you want to get to know your food, you got to have a food report. So I was lucky enough, uh, you know, in the first couple of days of being here in California to uh, visit 1901, the new exclusive club uh, for Club 33 members only over at Disney California Adventure. And uh, I have to say, it was uh, pretty spectacular. Um, thankfully, uh, we went on a day where it was empty. Uh, there was no one else in, in the entire place except for the people I was with. And it was absolutely gorgeous in there. Um, a very laid back lounge feel to it. It's not a restaurant uh, or full blown restaurant like Cl Club 33 is, but it's, it's very nice. And it's kind of, you know, out of the way. It's very quiet and it, it celebrates a lot of early Walt Disney um, before mm. be, really before he, he became a huge movie producer it, it celebrates pre uh, Snow White stuff and okay there are some amazing photographs on the walls of Walt and of Roy and uh, of their early animation days that were just unbelievable and st stuff that I haven't even seen before <laughs> so it's still pretty it's early California yes just okay, okay yeah it, fit, it fits into the whole Carthay Circle theme and Buena Vista Street theme because um, okay. it's part of Carthay Circle restaurant uh, it's the entrance is right next to the Carthay Circle restaurant um, only marked again kind of like Club 33 by a sign but it's this one says 1901 obviously ah. um, but it, it, it was very very nice in there I was um, struck by how low-key the atmosphere was. Um, they had some nice jazzy Disney tunes playing in the background. I, I really <laughs> like the loop of music in there. Um, and when you order some drinks, they have the, they make ice balls, which is wow. probably the coolest science thing I've ever seen. They have like a big, <laughs> it's a big cylinder of ice, and they put it uh, in this. Uh, it wasn't aluminum, I forget what it was made of, container, but then they put the lid on, and the lid, it starts off on the top, and it slowly goes in, and it melts the ice, it sucks out all the coldness, and it, it forms a perfectly shaped ice ball, and wow. takes it out, puts it right in the drink, and it doesn't dilute as quickly as regular ice does, so it doesn't water down your drink. Um, mm. It was a really cool little process that she did to go through it. She, she like rolled right up to our table and did it in front of us so we could watch it. I took a whole bunch of pictures. It was really, really neat. Well, you know, I've heard a lot about 1901 and Carthay Circle uh, to the fact that, you know, the food at Carthay Circle is supposed to be uh, probably the best Disney food out there. Did you get to sample any of the food? Yeah, well, I actually ate at Carthay Circle uh, the, one of the first days we were out here, and it was... Um, Probably one of the best fine dining experiences that I've had. Of course, 
being the jerk I am, I had the, the hamburger there, but um, <laughs> I did sample some of the other plates that the other people I was with had, and it was really good. I would even dare say it was uh, more delicious than the food that I had at Club 33 back in January. Um, mm. And they serve some of that same stuff in 1901, so um, it, it, it's not full meals in 1901. It's more like appetizers. Um, ah. I was telling George before, uh, like duck sliders. Um, Whoa. But it, it was, you know, the food is very, very good there. I think they really got a winner there. The, the one... So is, you know, the, is, the, is the purpose of 1901 then sort of to, to bleed off some of the Club 33 guests or to give them an exclusive you know, place to go at DCA? I think it's a little bit of both, to be honest with you, um, to, to kind of take some of the pressure off of the the Club 33 crowd itself. And if, you know, if members, if they didn't make a reservation, but they still want to go somewhere where it's private uh, and they can, you know, kind of relax and hang out with their friends. Again, 1901 has that more laid back lounge atmosphere that they can go. They have very comfortable chairs. They have couches. So it's very, it's a very cool place just to go and hang out. Um, and charge your iPhone because they had phone chargers <laughs> everywhere that you can just use for free. Wow. Oh, well, I guess not really since you're paying. Well, you're paying to get in the members membership are, so. to get in anyway. So, well, fantastic. Well, I mean, uh, so the important thing I know that all the watch uh, watchers and listeners want to know is uh, tell us about the bathrooms. The bathrooms were so cool, guys. It was so cool. Um, they are actually single bathrooms, so you go in. Uh, the first room you walk into, at least the men's room, I'm pretty sure it's the same for the women's as well, is, <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know, I didn't look, but I will next time, um, <laughs> is the mirror and sink, but then to the left is, you know, the the actual restroom. So it's a, it's a one-person-at-a-time restroom, but it's fairly spacious. Uh, it's about the size of a New York City apartment, so <laughs> it's really nice in there. Um, of course, took some photos of that as well. Hey. Um the the one thing that I the only thing I didn't like about the restaurant I found a little creepy was there's one wall uh, close to the entrance where every 15 minutes or so the shadow of Walt Disney like walks by, and it's really creepy for some reason I'm not and I can't put my finger on why it's just really creepy to me. Ooh, like a spirit type yeah. thing. Like the ghost of Walt Disney is is walking around the hallways of 1901 despite the fact that it was a parking lot when he was alive <laughs> <laughs> well i'm thinking you know this this might be a perfect um halloween segment yes the, for the, the halloween and community Corps weekly. the ghost of walter disney <laughs> in the restrooms at 1901 see it's weird because wow. he's probably looking for his car that's why his ghost has wandered around the hallways <laughs> there <laughs> i don't remember all these these things here this bar it's neat though they have they have um up at the bar itself they have four chairs um one says walt one says lily one says yeah. roy one says edna for the for you know the four of them so that was that was a nice little touch but um so if you sit and do you think the ghost comes says you're in my seat uh, that would be creepy too i wouldn't yes. want to be sitting there with walt excuse me you're in my seat get out oh man that'd be scary but uh n Beyond or beside, did you do any ghost hunting while you were there, though? No, I know I am prone to do that. However, I did not ghost hunt in 1901. Oh. Gotcha, that would have been good. So, uh, anything else? I mean, that really caught your fancy. You said all the memorabilia was pretty fantastic. The, yeah, I, you know, I, I was the, even thinking of you. There was stuff, there was a bookshelf on the wall, and I took pictures of all the books for you that was up there. So, so I will send those to you so you can check those out. Um, it looked like some stuff from the Adventurers Club kind of made its way over there too, and it wasn't like the crazy tacky stuff. It's stuff that fit in, so um, it, it was neat. I liked it. I liked the atmosphere, and if you have the opportunity, I think you should definitely cut. You know, take whoever's going to take you up on that. I think so. Wow. So you let me know when you come out, George, and we'll try to get in again. Okay, I'm looking at my schedule right now. Okay. I'm busy today. I'm sorry. Oh, I knew it. I knew it, man. Sorry, George. Sometimes you might see it, sometimes you don't. Hey, look, what's that? It's a five-legged goat. <laughs> While you're in the queue for Space Mountain at Disneyland, just before you head into the room where you're bored, take a look above you. There's actually a command module for Bay 12 that is right above your head. And if you look close enough, you can see that the module actually belongs to Captain J. Hench. <clears throat> of course, this refers to John Hench, who was instrumental in creating the iconic structure of Space Mountain itself. 
You know, I always pictured him as like an admiral. Admiral John Hench? Yeah, I don't know why. Well, we already have Admiral Joe Fowler, so uh, that's, that's probably... probably it. Do they have yeah. admirals in space? I, I guess so. I mean, if you can dream it, then they can. we can do it. We can promote them to admiral in space? I guess. Something like yeah, that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's like a, the Navy. You know, because you can sail the seven seas in the Navy. You know, you can Were put you your mind at ease. I knew that's where this was going. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> well, we should wrap this up before it gets even worse. Uh, we'd like to thank everybody so much for watching, listening, and absorbing. Yeah, be sure to leave us a comment and rate us on iTunes, and hopefully the three-hour delay doesn't bother you guys. Yeah, and we, we got a few nine-star nine star reviews. We did, and it was awesome. So thank you for all the nine-star so... reviews, guys. We even got a really cool one on Instagram. That was yes. awesome. That was awesome. So you can always email us, nine-star reviews, of course, at communicorweekly at gmail.com. Be sure to also like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash weekly, where I'm sure I'll be posting more and more photos for my day-to-day life at Disneyland there. So check it out. Yep. And follow us on Twitter. I'm at Imaginerding, and he's at Jeff Heimbuck. And for Jeff Heimbuck, I'm George Taylor. And for George Taylor, I'm Jeff Heimbuck. Thanks so much for listening. We'll see you next time on Communicore Weekly, the greatest online show. <laughs>